the next session with uh, Morten Johan Servi, who will uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, high, high DPI, which is uh, many more pixels than, than, than usually. Uh, I guess that while during the talk, there will also be passed around a box where you can put in a business card or a note with your name on, and we will draw a device amongst those people uh, at the end of the talk. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, welcome Morten. Thank you. Okay, is the microphone? Yes. Uh, so, a little bit about me. My name is uh, Morten Johan Sjøvig. I'm a software engineer at the Qt company. Uh, I've worked with Qt for uh, close to 11 years now. So I actually started back in the Trolltech days. I'm the platform maintainer for Qt on OS X. But today, I'm going to talk about uh, high DPI supporting Qt. And I'm going to be talking about a special mode of uh, high DPI support, which we call uh, the device pixel ratio high DPI mode. So I'll start out by uh, giving an int introduction to the mode, uh, explaining how it works. I'll talk a bit about how to enable it when using Qt. And finally, I'll uh, give you some tips for adapting uh, application code for dealing uh, with uh, high DPI or high uh, pixel density displays. So let's get started. Uh, so if you've ever tried to run a QML application, like same game, on, uh, for example, on an Android device with a high uh, display density, a high DPI Android device, then you might have seen that you end up with this, an application where everything is too small, it's too small to be usable. When we, what we really want to have is something closer to this. So that is uh, an application where everything has the proper visual size and, and is uh, laid out uh, correctly. And the high DPI mode that I'm going to talk about today is a mode where we can make this happen without modifying the application itself. So it's a solution where we solve the problem in Qt. And that, uh, so you can perhaps upgrade the Qt version and then get an application that works much better on high uh, pixel density displays. So to give some background on classical uh, DPI handling, uh, so a typical way, uh, handling in a classic mo mo way is that uh, displays are configured with a specific DPI value. For example, 72, 96, 192, depending on the pixel density of the display. Uh, Qt will then scale text automatically. But then the, often the application is responsible for scaling the rest, layouts, and so on, and, and laying on the user interface in a suitable way. Uh, and it, it can do that by accessing a logical DPI value somewhere and then uh, scaling uh, coordinates for the, for the layouts. And then the problem is if the application fails to do that, then we might end up with something that looks like this, a uh, creator on a high DPI uh, display. And we see that uh, some of the text is correctly scaled, like the menu bar. Uh, the icons are way too small. Uh, there's, uh, some of the text is too small. Uh, on the bottom here, we see that uh, the size of the buttons, the text size is okay, but the button size does not follow the text size. So it, it's, it's way too cramped and too little space. Uh, so instead, what, again, what we want what you want to have is something that looks like uh, this, where everything has a uniform visual size. Uh, so we have uh, all the icons have the proper visual size. The buttons around the text in the bottom have, have a size that is big enough to fit the text. 
as ex except for in the horizontal direction half, you would have to resize the whole window to, to do everything. So how do we accomplish this? And, and by the way, this is the same creator in both examples. So it's the same uh, creator source code. We didn't make any modifications to the creator. We are instead changing Qt behind the scenes and adding the support in Qt. So how do we do this? We do it by introducing a second coordinate system. Uh, so if you are familiar with the Apple uh, devices, Mac OS X, uh, iOS, so this, it's the same method that uh, Apple has, uh, is using on, on their devices. So if this is some, sounds familiar, then it is. Yes, it's ex exactly the same thing. Uh, if you are not familiar with that approach, then I'll uh, try to explain it now and show how it works. So from before, we have a coordinate system, the main coordinate system. And this is where the application exists. This is, I mean, the, the window has a size in the main coordinate system. Uh, we lay out uh, the contents of the window in that coordinate system. Event geometry is in that coordinate system, and so on. And, and since we are introducing a second coordinate system, then we need a name for this coordinate system now. So we call that device independent pixels. And so this coordinate system corresponds to the visual size of the application. So we then add a second coordinate system, which we call device pixels. And this corresponds to the uh, the actual resolution of the display in question. So in, in this case, uh, there's a scale factor of two between them, and that is the device, the device pixel ratio. So, and, and the way this works is that applications can mostly continue to work in device independent pixels. They don't have to know about the device pixels. Uh, and then Qt will take care of the scaling. So if you have uh, text, for example, will be automatically rendered in high resolution. Uh, and also vector graphics also are autom automatically rendered in high resolution. So to illustrate how this works, I made a quick video. Um, here we have two displays, one uh, with a normal DPI and a device pixel ratio of one, and a second one with, on the right, your left-hand side, with a, uh, it's a high DPI display with a device pixel ratio of two. So let's see what's happened. So you can resize the window as usual, and it prints the width and height there. And we move it to the second display, and the width and height stays the same, but there's a new device pixel ratio. And the fonts are rendered in high resolution on the second display, although you can see that here on the, on the video. Yep. So moving on. So the So to sum up some of the benefits, uh, I see them. Uh, it's, the mode is backwards compatible in the sense that existing code tends to work and you get applications that look uh, looks okay. They, are, they have, uh, uh, UI elements have a correct visual size uh, and so on. It's automatic. Vector graphics and fonts are automatically rendered in high resolution. And there's also an element of simplicity to it. We can continue to hard code, hard code layouts and pixel values. And then the Qt and the system operating system will scale those values for us. So we don't, we don't when we, uh, so if you lay out a button, for example, with a certain pixel size, you can keep that value hard coded. There's also some uh, drawbacks. 
uh, since there are two coordinate systems, so as long as you can stay in one of them and work exclusively, exclusively in device independent pixels, for example, then things are easy. But if you have to deal with both of them at the same time, then that is an extra complication. Uh, if you actually do want to work in display pixels, then that is no harder. So it can be difficult to get to the actual display resolution and work in actual display pixels. So I mentioned the scale factor, the device pixel ratio. Uh, integer scale factors work best. So if you try to use non-integer scale factors, then you might end up with uh, visual errors. OK, so let's take a look at how we can use this in Qt. So first of all, we support uh, this for Qt Videos and Qt Quick. It is, and it, it used to be platform dependent. We, have, we started supporting this on the Apple platforms, uh, Mac OS X and iOS. With Qt 5.6, we are moving uh, to adding more cross-platform support, so we want to broaden the scope. Uh, and also add a cross-platform component there, which can, which can work on any platform. So, I'm going to explain three ways to use it, and start with the first one. And this is when it's supported by the operating system. For example, like on Mac OS X and iOS. So in this case, the operating system provides the display density information and then sets up the, the coordinate system for us. So in that case, there's nothing we need to do uh, in Qt or on the application level to enable it. And as I said, this is the case on Mac OS X and iOS and also on Wayland. It's possible to con uh, configure the Wayland server with a scale factor and then enable uh, this mode. The second way, and this is new in uh, Qt 5.6, is to set uh, an environment variable, Qt auto scale factor. And Qt will then read the DPI values, uh, scale factors from all displays, and set up the coordinate systems uh, for the application. So this needs some platform integration. So we are supporting this on X11, Windows, and we're also aiming to support Android. So the third way is to just set a specifier scale factor directly. And that's a global scale factor for all displays. And this mode is useful for uh, development and testing in particular. So you can simulate any scale factor, uh, no matter what hardware you have. So you don't have to have a specific hardware anymore to test how your application works with a different scale factor. Of course, for final testing and verification, you want to see how it looks on actual hardware. And this mode can also be useful uh, if you are targeting specific uh, hardware. Let's say you're target targeting one specific screen that has a given uh, display density then this gives you the opportunity to uh, to hardcore a scale factor for that display. So let's see how it works. And I have a demo. So first we are going to test a standard QVideos application. Text edit, let's see here. So this is with no scale factor set. Okay, and then we can then set, let me bring that to the background. Oops. We can then set a scale factor like so. And of course, we are now changing the scale factor, but I can't change the resolution of the display. So what's going to happen is that everything becomes bigger. Uh, 
So text edit is now running with a scale factor of two. And you can probably see that the text edit does not have high resolution icons. So then we get the DIAs. Uh, but we still get correctly sized icons. So that's a good first step. So there's no tiny icons or anything like, anything like that. So we can continue and uh, scale factor three. And at some point, the max style will break down. It's really only designed for a scale factor of one or two. For yes, you see it's going, starting to go here. But uh, the, the fusion style is in general quite scalable. Whoops, what did I type? Style style, no, that's not a good idea. No. Let's see, one more try. Uh -huh. There we go. So at 4x, still looks good. Small error there. Yes, we can try. Uh, and, uh, so let's see, 1.5. So this is at 1.5. And there are some, uh, let's see, yes, we get things like this. So it depends on the application and if you use uh, cute widgets or cute fic. I have a cute fic example for later on that we are also going to test. So let's see, and I'll move straight on to QtPic, I think. Let's see. And I have this. This is are the new QtPic controls, the labs controls. So we can run it at a scale factor of two, and things. Work okay, let's see, yeah. We can also scale the other way. And so if this was a 2x display, then this will actually bring us down to 1x, and we can then work, or 0.5x, and we can work in display pixels. Uh, so let's look at... Uh, a fractional scale factor. Oops, small bug there on sort of. But other than that, things look okay with this example. So we can uh, keep going. Then we get there. Then we get a style debugger at uh, the end of it. So you can see how the actual uh, resolution of the vectors are. And, uh, we can, what happens? Okay, yeah, okay, yes. So that's it. Uh, at some point it breaks down and... Uh, oh, it worked. Well, let's, uh, let's stop. Okay, so that was the demo. So that's an easy way to test uh, your application at different scale factors. Uh, so finally, some tips for adapting application code to this mode. And so the first tip is actually that, that you can keep uh, most code as is. But you do need, and there are some things you need to watch out, out for. So the first thing is uh, raster graphics. So unlike vector graphics, if you have raster content such, such as images or pixel maps, then you need some uh, manual handling there, or you need to provide uh, new pixel maps, for example. 
Uh, OpenGL is in the voice pixels, so then that's a low-level API, so then you're always working with the voice pixels. And then, yeah, there's the sc uh, scaling issues with some of the styles. Let's see, excuse me. So, So, uh, raster graphics, images, and pixel maps. So the overall thing is that you need to provide enough pixels to cover all the scale factors that you want to support. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. The simplest approach is to just provide a, uh, a single high-resolution version of the pixel map. If you do that, then Qt will typically scale it down on the normal DPI displays. Uh, but this comes at a performance cost. So Qt will be scaling the fixed map over and over again each time the, it is drawn. And the visual quality might also not be good enough due to scaling artifacts and so on. So the common approach is to provide several fixed map versions uh, for each scale factor. So if you have a 32x times 32x base version, you could, for example, provide a 64 times 64 and a 96 times 96 version. And this requires some version management. You, right, you have multiple versions of the fixed maps, and you need to select one according to the target uh, scale factor or device pixel ratio. And so uh, the basic way to do that is kind of an imperative approach. If you have code, that draws the pixel map. You can access the device pixel ratio for the target uh, screen or for the target uh, paint device, and then select a pixel map based on the value you get back. back. Uh, a second approach is to use QIGON. You add the pic all the pixel map versions to QIGON. And then you select a uh, pixel map with the pixel map function as before. And in, in order to, to uh, get a suitable pixel map for the display you are targeting, you pass in a window pointer. So this is a Q window, which will help uh, Q icons uh, select the correct pixel map for that, for that window. And the size here, this, that's the size in device independent pixels. So that's the visual size of the pixel map that you, uh, that you want to select. Yes? So the, the size you pass, pass in would be the base size. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we get the device pixel ratio from the window. And then it's a multiplication, right? So if the base size is uh, 32 times 32, and we are, are at a 2x display, then the pixel map you're looking for is the 64 times 64 version. And then there are lots of funny edge cases in between, like if you don't have, if you don't have enough pixels, what do you do? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and this is a new mode because, uh, because the pixel map function can now return a pixel map that is uh, larger than the requested size for a thermal uh, on network display. And existing code might not expect that, so there's an application attribute which you can set to enable this behavior. And so the final uh, way to manage multiple pixel maps is to use a 2x image versions. And this is kind of a catch-all approach. If you're working with APIs where you can't use a icon, then this is a possible way to handle it. Uh, and the way it works is that you place, you create, or you create the high-resolution version of the image, 
and you give it the special at 2x suffix, you place it on the file system or in resources, uh, side by side with the original file. And then you refer to the base image in source code, and Qt will automatically select the high resolution version on uh, high resolution dis displays. So on a 2x display, it would go for the foo at 2x version of the image. OK, so to sum up, the device speaks ratio can help you. There's a new mode in Qt. It can help you deal with uh, different display densities. We have some exciting 5.6 improvements, so support for more platforms, uh, and also a cross-platform development and testing mode. So I would uh, encourage you to download a 5.6 uh, snapshot and test your application today. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about uh, the Qt 5.5 today on Windows. How yes. much of this is supported, and um, how much should I wait for 5.6? So there actually is some support on Windows today. So that's kind of a precursor uh, to uh, the, the cross-platform support. Uh, and I think you can test it if you have 5.5. Yes, there is this, uh, the envi environment variables are slightly different. Uh, I think in 5.5 you can, on Windows, you can set the cute uh, device pixel ratio directly. Like so. Uh, but functionally, it should be the same. So it's more of an internal uh, re refactoring where we moved some of the code from the Windows platform plugin side to cross-platform code. So unifying it with the rest uh, of the code. Yeah, so one uh, question here. How about input event coordinates? Are those in device pixels or in uh, virtual pixels, or can we choose? Those are also in virtual pixels, in device independent pixels. So and. Unfortunately, you can't choose, so, yeah. <laughs> so I guess this will be the last question. So will there be a different way than using environment variables to enable this? Because not all users will be able to choose this. Yes, we would like to have a, perhaps a proper uh, C++ API. Was there any, if, was that, is that what you are looking for, or, uh, yes. yeah? Yeah. So I think we will try to find a way. Uh, the problem is that uh, there is there is some platform specificness there, so we are not sure how, what that API should look like. Yeah. So we are kind of starting out with environment variables, and that also gives some control to the user of the application. So yeah. So uh, before we all uh, head out. Uh